All right, so uh, we want to be able to um, encode the fact that certain entities are related to one another, right? And in our case, uh, we have uh, users um, having a relationship with websites, right? There's a one-to-many relationship between users and websites, and also you have a one-to-many between websites and pages, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, now, in relational databases, uh, you have one way of implementing this. Uh, typically, you have a, a foreign key here referring to a primary key here, right? And that's a very common way of uh, encoding one-to-many relationships between uh, two between records, right? And what you might have here is that one user here uh, is referring to uh, you have related to several websites like this, right? And the way they work is that each website has a reference back to its parent, correct? Uh, and same thing if you have uh, pages, if each page would know who their parent uh, website is, right? So you notice here you have a foreign key that references to a primary key in the website. So you might have several pages here uh, that are referencing the parent website, correct? Uh, and 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 um, and certainly, um, MongoDB allows you to do this kind of, uh, of uh, modeling, right? Where you have the, all the children having the primary key of their parent. Right? But it's not the only way, right? MongoDB pro allows you to do many more things uh, for capturing these types of relationships. Okay? Uh, so, so we'd like to let, let's consider a couple. Um, another another way that uh, uh, um, MongoDB allows you to do this is that. Instead of the children, right, in the relationship, uh, having references to their parents, you could have it the other way around, where the parent has references to all their children. Okay, which coming from an object-oriented world, it's actually more natural, right? Where um, you know, if you were doing this in Java, right, you would have a user class that has a collection or an array, right, of uh, of website instances, correct? And then each website instance, each website class would have a collection or an array of parent, of, uh, of pages, right? It would be seldom the case that the, the page class has a reference to the parent website, right? That, that would be unusual um, for, for you know, if you're doing it in an object-oriented, uh, uh, I mean, certainly you could do it, uh, but it, it, it's less, uh, less common. Uh, again, you wouldn't have a, a, widget, a website class having a reference back to its parent, okay? Um, uh, so, but nevertheless, uh, uh, that, that's, 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 that's something you would do in common in an object-oriented world. And, and MongoDB allows you to do that, right? In the declaration of, um, of the user schema, right, certainly you have the username, you have the first name, you have the last name. You can also define websites, right, and say that this is an array, right, of references to um, to uh, the, the the websites that that, that uh, are their children. So basically, being able to do this instead, right? The 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 user having references to their children, right? So so whatever whatever these the IDs of these would be, you would have here w1, w2, w3. Right? You would have each website, each each, uh, each user having a reference, uh, an array of references to. Uh, each one of the, the websites. Make sense? Right? So you can certainly do that, go that way. Okay. Um, and that, that is actually more, more, um, more natural for, you know, from an object from a from object point of view. And but that's not that's not uh, all, right? What and what um, so that's that's two ways, right? That you can you can encode this relationship. There's a third way actually the third third option in um, in MongoDB uh, is to collapse this this entire data model into a single uh, data model, right? Where you know this is the the more common way to Im implement this is to normalize the data, right? This is a normalized data structure, right? Where data model where each entity has its own table or each each uh, has its own collection, right? Uh, and they're separate from each other, right? So this there will be a collection of users, a collection of websites, a collection of of pages, and so on and so forth. Right and uh, and 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 the the only way that we know that they are all uh, they are, are in any way related to each other is because they have references, yes, and the and the references allow you to reconstruct uh, a particular path, right, uh, or a particular uh, hierarchy of a particular tree, a particular branch, yes, 
Um, so, but uh, what 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 MongoDB allows you to do is that instead of uh, websites being their own collection, uh, instead of having its own collection, you could actually embed the instances, the object instances of those websites, instead of being in its own separate collection, you could embed them right here. Where you have here the name of the website, the description, and any any other attribute with it with their values, all their name value pairs, right? That the, the, the instance objects right would be embedded inside of, of this array of websites. Plus, you know, each one of the each one of the websites. Right, so here's another one, and here's another one. Right, so these would be instances embedded in here. Right, so there would not be any collection called website. Uh, instead, it would be embedded in the array for each user. Make sense? And you could take that a little further, right? You could also collapse the page uh, uh, collection or instances of the pages inside of each one of the websites. Right? So each website uh, can have right, one of the attributes would be pages, right? Uh, which is an array itself. And here you would have the instances of pages. You know, uh, and so on and so forth. So this 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 website it would have its own array of pages. This website instance would have its own array of pages. This one would have its own array of pages, and so on and so forth. Make sense? Uh, this is referred to as the embedded data model. Right? MongoDB allows you to do that as well. Uh, and you can keep going, right? If you have widgets, uh, you you could have you know each one of these pages have the widgets being an array of widgets. Now, would you actually do this? Right. Uh, so MongoDB uh, suggests that whenever it makes sense, whenever it makes sense, right, you should try to do something like this. Right? Embed the data right, uh, inside of each other. Right? Whenever, whenever it makes sense. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. So that's what I want to chat about. When would you do one or not? Okay. Uh, so, now, what, 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 what they're, what they're uh, uh, advocating is that if you had everything collapsed into, into a, a larger embedded data model, right, uh, you would, the query from the server right, would just be one. Right? If you retrieve a user, that user would contain all their websites. Each website would contain all the pages. All the pages would contain all the, website, all, all the widgets. Uh, so there would be no additional queries back to the server back to the database to query for this. Right? So you're minimizing all the latency that would happen, you know, and the, all the network latency will go away. Right? Obviously you have to handle the case that uh, you have, you're gonna have to cache that all that on the client. Right? Uh, so that's that, that might be way too much information to cache that on the client. Right? Also, uh, if you have it on the client, you run into the risk uh, of um, uh, you know, whatever you have on the client being stale. Right? So if you have data that is being shared amongst users, where you might have several users updating the same data model, right? You run the risk that whatever I queried a, a couple minutes ago might be completely different than what's what's already that has been updated on the server. So that's another issue. So it depends, right? Um, also, you need to consider, you know, the various use cases, right? Um, you know, uh, here, right? For, so for instance, uh, if you have a use case where a um, a uh, a system administrator would like to be able to list all the websites, yes, and for administering the websites, maybe removing a website uh, that's inappropriate or looking at the content of a website. So their use case is that I want to list all the websites, right? Uh, it would be it would be very inconvenient to have it modeled this way, right? Because if you want to list all the websites, you have to first iterate over all the users. And then for each user, you would need to iterate over all the websites, right? And then do all, all the collections of, from each one of the users. It would be very, very inconvenient, okay? If you have that user, that, that user experience, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that use case, then you would, not you would not collapse the websites into the, use case, into the users, right? It would be much more convenient to have it separate as its own, uh, its own collection. Yes? Uh, so what about... Collapsing the uh, the pages into the website, uh, maybe that might that might make sense, right? Of collapsing the pages, uh, but then that means that if you're retrieving a website, uh, that means that you're retrieving all the pages and all the widgets for each one of the pages. So it could be you know it could be a fair amount of you know several dozen um, 
you know, several dozen, maybe hundreds of pages, yes? Uh, and each page might have you know, dozens of widgets. So you're talking about retrieving thousands of widgets, right, for each, for, 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 for retrieving a website. So maybe it might make no sense to do that either, right, to collapse the pages into the websites, right, that if I retrieve a website, I might be editing just a single page, right, and that's all I'm editing uh, for, 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 the rest of, for the rest of the day. Um, so why would I ever retrieve the, all, the, all the widgets for all the pages for a single website that I'm editing, right? Uh, but collapsing the widgets, into the pages might make more sense, right? That if I am editing a particular page, right, the chances are that I'm the only one editing this page, right? That I'm not sharing this with anyone else, right? I'm, I'm the only one looking at this, uh, and the chances are that uh, I'm looking at a single page, and, and, and I could see all the widgets all at once, right? Or simply just scroll and, and edit the widgets and just move them around and, and remove this one or, or update one or the other. It might make sense that there is no need for a separate collection, right, that stores the widgets, right? This could, this might make, make sense to embed it as part of the pages. That makes sense? Also, use cases where a system administrator might want to list all the widgets, that might make no sense, right? That, that a, a, an administrator might, might want to list thousands and thousands of widgets. You know, it, it would be, it would be um, you know, very inconvenient for that. So, 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 so there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a good chance that we might decide, right, that uh, instead of having this its own collection, just embed it inside of its, its page. Right? But there's, there's less chance that we would do the same for pages inside of widgets, uh, web, websites or websites inside of the uh, users. That makes sense? Also, you need to consider you know, the, the frequency of, uh, of, of access, right? if, if, and also the concurrency. Right? If you have lots of people uh, accessing from, from, from different places, uh, you might want to separate them right? so that each individual can update them individually. Right, so that you, you, you have less chances of, of having, having queried something that might be very soon, might be stale. Right? So you know, I, I, I fetched it, I have it, I'm caching on the client, but someone else is modifying it uh, from, from, a, from a different place. Right? Okay, so, so yeah, so those, those are the things you might want to consider when you're considering the various ways of modeling this. Okay? Now for the assignments, uh, we, we are asked to imp uh, implement it in two different ways, the relationship. Right? We're going to implement it. Um, the classical way, where the children has references to the parent, okay? But we're also going to implement it uh, where the parent has references back to the, uh, to the children, okay? Uh, so we're going to implement it both ways. Now, you, typically you wouldn't implement both ways, right? But it's a good chance to practice on how to do it uh, one or the other. Uh, so so we'll, we'll have the, the parents having arrays of the children, and the children having references back to their parents. Make sense? All right. All right. So first, let's let's uh, let's play around with uh, being able to just create a website and relate it to to the uh, to the user. All right. All right. Let's do that. <laughs> 